Welcome to our series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. Today, in our series, we take up the subjects Jealousy and Envy and look to the writings of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother for guidance and enlightenment. From Sri Aurobindo, Jealousy and envy are things common to human nature. But these are the very things that a sadak ought to throw out of himself. Otherwise, why is he a sadak at all? He is supposed to be here for seeking the divine. But in the seeking for the divine, jealousy, envy, anger, etc., have no place. They are movements of the ego and can only create obstacles to the union with the divine. You do not seem to have a correct idea of the nature of vital desire. Vital desire grows by being indulged. It does not become satisfied. If your desire were indulged, it would begin to grow more and more and ask for more and more. That has been our constant experience with the sadaks, and it confirms what has always been known about desire. Desire and envy have to be thrown out of the consciousness. There is no other way to deal with them. Only one thing I must note, that no wrong idea may linger in your understanding. You seem to say in one passage of a letter, that the mother had said to you that jealousy is inevitable in true love, in ordinary life. And if it is not there, when one sees the other loving elsewhere, then they don't love each other. You must have strangely misheard and misunderstood the mother. It is just the opposite of what the mother has always said and thought, and the very contrary of all her knowledge and experience. It is the idea of the ordinary mind about jealousy and love, not hers. She remembers very well having told you just the opposite, that even in ordinary life, one is not jealous if one has the true love. Jealousy is the common movement of the human egoistic lower vital with its grasping possessive instinct and it cannot be anything else. I thought it better to make this clear so that there might be no misleading impression that such movements of the lower vital nature have any sanction or support in the truth of the soul. They belong to the vital ignorance. They are fruits of the vital ego. We are very glad to hear that you are better and that X has helped you out of the crisis. Surely this jealousy must go and no trace of it remain. Do not doubt that the mother's love is and will be always with you. Trust in her grace and all this will go out of you and leave you the true child of the mother which in your mind and heart 
you always are. This jealousy, which is a very common affliction of the vital, will go like the rest. If you have the aspiration to get rid of it, it can only come by force of habit. And with the psychic growing in you, and the mother's force acting, the power of the habit is sure to diminish and fade away. Do not be discouraged by its occasional return, but reject it so that it may be unable to stay long and will be obliged to retire. Very soon then, it will cease to come at all. You allowed yourself to be surprised by the old movement of unreasoning jealousy, and it brought back the old unreasoned thoughts and feelings. For you are no more than others here as a mere worker. You are here as the mother's child, and the work is there only because it is a part of the sadhana. Also, this feeling of jealousy and other doubts and difficulties are not peculiar to you alone. They are common to human nature, and most here have them or have had them and found it difficult to be free. So there is no reason to suppose because of their presence that you are unfit or will not be able to do the sadhana. The human vital is everywhere. In the ashram also is full of unruly and violent forces, anger, pride, jealousy, desire to dominate, selfishness, insistence on one's own will, ideas, preferences, indiscipline. And it is these things that are the cause of the disorder and difficulty in the DR, dining room, and elsewhere here also in the ashram work. It is not easy to overcome gloom, depression, grief, and suffering, because something in the human vital clings to it and almost needs it as part of the drama of life. So also I have never said that sex, anger, jealousy, etc. were easy to overcome. I have said it was difficult because they were ingrained in the human vital. And even if thrown out, were always being brought into it either by its own habit or by the invasion of the general nature and the resurgence of its old response. All that, of course, is not love, but self-love. Jealousy is only an ugly form of self-love. That is what people do not understand. They even think that demands and jealousy and wounded vanity are signs of love, or at least natural attendance of it. The mother, if you could just understand that what I do is always for the good of each and everyone, and never for the good of a few at the expense of others, you would very soon overcome your jealousy and be delivered from this painful sore spot. Be convinced 
that what I do for you is always exactly what you need in order to advance on the way. Then all jealousy and envy will disappear. There is never any reason for jealousy. It is a very low and ignorant movement. Jealousy comes from a narrowness of the mind and a weakness of the heart. It is a great pity that so many are attacked by it. Jealousy, with its escort of slanders, is the output of the weak and the small. You should not speak to others about what I write or say to you because they become jealous, and their jealousy creates a bad atmosphere which falls back on you and brings back the difficulty to you because you spoke. You opened yourself and received it, perhaps without even being aware of it. Love from your mother. It is the same with all the lower impulses, jealousy or envy, hatred or violence. These too are movements that seize you, waves that overwhelm and invade. They deform. They do not belong to the true character or the true nature. They are no intrinsic or inseparable part of yourself but come out of the sea of surrounding obscurity in which move the forces of the lower nature. It is because rancor, along with jealousy, is one of the most widespread causes of human misery. Namaste.